So this was not only with one companion, Sayyiduna Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. This would be with all the companions who narrated hadith. Then he would know which students, tabaqat, tabaqat, meaning the layers, which students, which group of students narrated from that companion. And then the students of those students, like Sayyiduna Anas bin Malik, radiallahu anhu, the khadim of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the, one of the last companions to pass away. Who was the last Sahabi to pass away? Sayyiduna Abu Tufayl radiallahu anhu. Sayyiduna Abu Tufayl radiallahu anhu, which I think he passed away in the year 110 Hijri, the last Sahabi to pass away. Sayyiduna Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu was one of those younger companions. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did dua for him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extend his life and place barakah in him. And then he was given through the mercy of Allah over 80 sons. And he had two daughters. And whenever it would rain, it would rain over his garden and not the gardens of others. And there was barakah blessings in his wealth. Now, Sayyiduna Anas bin Malik radiallahu an, he had numerous students. They narrated hadith from him. But the most precise and meticulous student was Sayyiduna Thabit al-Bunani rahimahullah ta'ala. So someone like Imam al-Bukhari will know Sayyiduna Anas radiallahu an, he narrated this many hadith. His students are this many from this city. He would know the names and dates of birth and dates of death and how meticulous they were, how precise they were. He would examine their narrations, but then also he would know which student was the most precise. And for Sayyiduna Anas bin Malik radiallahu an, it was Thabit al-Bunani. And then from Thabit al-Bunani, there are people who narrate from him and then someone like Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala will know that from Thabit al-Bunani, the most precise student is Hamad ibn Salama. Hamad ibn Salama. Then he will know the date of birth and the date of death of Hamad ibn Salama, how many hadith he narrated, how precise he was. And he would cross-examine these hadith with all the other students. This is the precision of the mind of the likes of Imam Muhammad bin Ismail al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala. So by the age of 18, he wrote a tariq al-kabir which contains over 40,000 names of companions, Ali Muridwan, and at-tabi'een, successors, and atba'u tabi'een, the successors of the successors. Names of these asma'u rijal and compiled a tariq al-kabir. Where did he compile a tariq al-kabir? In al-Masjid al-Nabawi al-Sharif. He finished the book in al-Masjid al-Nabawi al-Sharif near the blessed grave of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. عند قبر الرسول sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he writes that I finished this book on a full moon in the nights of al-Madina al-Munawara. At the age of 18. Today, if you go to al Madina al Munawwara and you go towards the graveyard al Baqi' Jannah al Baqi' or Baqi' al Gharqad, and you take a left and you go out into the courtyard and you come out of the courtyard, you will reach a masjid which is known as Masjid al Imam al Bukhari. That masjid is constructed on the location where Al Imam al Bukhari ta'ala, settled while he was doing Talab al Hadith in Al Madina al Munawwara. <laughs> so the Uthmani Caliphate, they, the likes of Sultan al Salim rahimahullah, and others, what they would do is wherever they knew there was a, an historical <laughs> site, a place of history, they would construct a masjid named after the person. So the purpose of building and constructing a masjid at that area is in order to inform the public 
that Al Imam al Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala came here in this location. Subhanallah. Al Imam al Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala went Hajj at a young age in his early teens. And when he went to Mecca al Mukarramah with his mother and siblings, they returned back to Bukhara. He remained in Mecca al Mukarramah and he sought knowledge. He started seeking knowledge. And seeking knowledge here meant that the likes of Imam al-Bukhari, when he would enter Basra, the city of Basra, the students of Hadith, they, whenever they needed to check their manuscripts, they would check the manuscripts in accordance with the memory of Imam al-Bukhari. For instance, during his journeys, and what would the Ahlul Hadith do? The Ahlul Hadith would travel from city to city to Talibul Hadith. So they would go from Khurasan, Naysabur, Bukhara, Tirmidh, all these areas where the Ashab al Kutub is Sitta are from. Meaning the, the authors of the six books of Hadith are from that area. But they would go to Baghdad, they would go to Al Kufa. They would go to Al Basra, they would go to Al Hijaz in Mecca Al Mukarramah and Al Madinat Al Munawwara. Al Hijaz was the place where the likes of Sufyan bin Uyayna, Rahimallah Ta'ala, was settled. Al Kufa was the place where Sufyan Al Thawri, Rahimallah Ta'ala, was settled. Al Sham, Bilad Al Sham, which is Greater Syria, that was the region in which Al Imam Al Awza'i, Rahimallah Ta'ala, was settled who was the Imam of Ahl Sham. He was the one who said about Ahlul Iraq, the people of Iraq. He said, what do they know regarding a seer jihad? Meaning the Ahlul Sham are the people of jihad. Why are Ahlul Sham the people of jihad? Because Syria is always being invaded, so they would always fight. So the ulama of Sham would write down the ahkam, the legal rulings of jihad. So he said, what do the Ahlul Iraq know about jihad? So Imam Muhammad al-Shaybani, rahimahullah ta'ala, when he heard this, he became angry. The student of Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah ta'ala. And he is also the teacher to Imam Muhammad bin Idris al-Shafi'i, rahimahullah ta'ala. When Imam Muhammad al-Shaybani, rahimahullah ta'ala, heard this, he became angered. So he wrote down his famous book, Asirul Kabir. Asirul Kabir, and he sent it to Al Imam Al Awza'i. When Al Imam Al Awza'i saw the book, he took back his words. Meaning he was impressed by the fiqh, the jurisprudence of Ahlul Kufa, which is when they say Ahlul Kufa, like Al Imam Al Tirmidhi, Rahimullah. Abu Isa Muhammad bin Isa bin Sawra at Tirmidhi, Rahimullah, the author of the Jami' who passed away in the year 279, in his book when he says, Waqal Ahlul Kufa, or Ahlul Ra'i, he says Ahlul Kufa mostly. When he says this, he means Al Imam Abu Hanifa and his students. So in every region, you had scholars of Ahlul Hadith, and Al Imam Al Bukhari, Rahimullah Ta'ala, went into those regions and studied in those regions. Now some of them had passed away, or some of them, like Al-Imam Abdul Razak al-Sana'ani, rahimahullah, he had already written his Musannaf, he was one of the teachers of Al-Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal. He had already written his Musannaf, and they say after the year 200, his memory was weak. So many of them had passed away. So Al-Imam Bukhari didn't meet some of them, but he met many of them who were contemporary to him and those who were in the higher tabaqa, the higher uh, narrators, meaning the higher generation, because they have tabaqat, synchronic uh, layers of uh, narrators. When he traveled for Talib al-Hadith, at one point he would attend the Majlis al-Hadith and he would not write down anything. When about 15 to 16 days passed by, his class fellows, they said, you have been attending the gatherings of hadith for over two weeks, yet we have been writing down the hadith. They would write appro approximately 
a thousand hadiths a day. They said, we have been writing down the hadith. Why are you attending if you are wasting your time? So he said, because you are what you are pressing me for an answer. He sat them down and he recited from memory all the hadith that had been dictated by the Sheikh, the Sheikh of the hadith from the first day up to the day they had reached. This was the astounding mem memory. And there is a famous story that when Imam Muhammad bin Ismail al-Bukhari entered Baghdad, the people of Baghdad <coughs> wanted to test his memory. They wanted to test his memory because they had heard about his intelligence. So what they did is they took 100 hadith, gave 10 hadith to 10 different people. And they took the asanib, the chains of narration, and mixed up the chains of narration. So they gave the wrong chains of narration for every hadith. And they said, when Imam al-Bukhari arrives, you recite these hadiths to him in order that we check his precision, his preciseness in determining the correctness of the hadith. So when he arrived, they sat down in the masjid, the first person came. He recited from memory 10 hadith, but with the 10 wrong chains of narration. Al-Imam al-Bukhari stayed quiet. Then the second person came and he recited the same hadith. Now, there was a response from Al-Imam al-Bukhari which gave the indication to some of the attendees that he has realized. But the other people thought that Imam Bukhari is unaware. And then when they went through all 10 individuals, Imam Al-Bukhari summoned the first individual. And he said, you read these 10 hadith, and he recited the 10 hadith from memory with these 10 chains, but the correct chains are the following, and he recited the correct chains for those hadith from memory. Then he did this with the second person, and the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, and the sixth, until he reached the tenth person. This astounded the people of Baghdad, and this story is very, very well known. So the reputation of Imam Bukhari Taala spread in his early days, they say before even a hair had grown on his face, he was already renowned for Asma'ul Rijal, knowing the names of the, the biographies of the narrators, Ruwatul Hadith, but also the science of Ilalul Hadith. And Ilalul Hadith is such an important subject that throughout Al Jami' of Imam Al Tirmidhi, Rahmallahu Ta'ala, Al Imam Al Tirmidhi Rahmallahu Ta'ala will say, Qala Muhammadun, meaning Muhammad said, Who is Muhammad? Al Imam Al Bukhari Rahmallah. And at the beginning of the Jami' of Al Imam Al Tirmidhi, there is a work known as Al Ilal Al Saghir. Al Ilal Al Saghir is a work written on the subject, probably one of the earliest works, alongside with the Muqaddima Al Imam Muslim bin Al Hajjaj Al Qushayri, Al Imam Muslim. Rahimahullah Ta'ala, which points out the hidden defects in some of the narrators. In that book, Al Imam Al Tirmidhi Rahimahullah Ta'ala always gives the citation of Al Imam Al Bukhari Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He also gives the citation of Al Imam Abu Hatim Al Razi and Ibn Abi Hatim Al Razi and Abu, uh, Abu Zur'a Al Razi. These are the Razis. The Razi name is from Ray. The region Ray, people who come from that region in Afghanistan, they are referred to as Ar Razi. Do not get it mixed with Al Imam Muhammad bin Umar bin Al Khatib, Fakhruddin Ar Razi, Rahimallah Ta'ala, who, who passed away in the year 606, 101 years after Al Imam Abu Hamid Al Ghazali. Al Imam Fakhruddin Ar Razi was not renowned for hadith. He was renowned for what? For 
tafsir tafsir al Quran. He was renowned for ilm al kalam, theology, ashari kalam, and he was renowned for usul al fiqh. Uh, he has uh, Al Mahsul, a famous book written on Usul al Fiqh, which is legal theory. So the name Al Razi is from th that early period. But Abu Hatim Al Razi and his son Ibn Abi Hatim Al Razi and Abu Zur'a Al Razi, these people were renowned for Ilal al Hadith. They could point out subtleties within the chain of narration and within the text of the Hadith. And Al Imam Muhammad bin Ismail al Bukhari was well known for this subject also. And this is why Al Imam al Tirmidhi rahmahullah, <coughs> narrates from him. Al Imam Muslim bin Al Hajjaj al Qushayri al Naysaburi is Al Imam Muslim rahmahullah ta'ala, who passed away a few years after Al Imam al Bukhari, I think in the year 261, because Al Imam al Bukhari rahmahullah ta'ala, passed away in the year 256. He narrates from Al Imam Bukhari, but not in his Sahih. He narrates out of his Sahih. But Al Imam Al Tirmidhi, from the Qutb Sitta, from the six books, Al Imam Al Tirmidhi, Rahimallah Taala, narrates from Al Imam Bukhari also in his book, and he makes reference to the Sahih of Al Imam Bukhari. What is the Sahih of Al Imam Bukhari? Famously, we refer to it as the Sahih of Al Imam Bukhari, but the full name. Is al-jami' al-sahih 